Hey gang, in this video, let's go over record triggered flows in Salesforce. As we know, flows are a form of Salesforce automation. And for automation to do its thing, something has to kick it off. For record triggered flows, that kicker or trigger is when something happens to an individual Salesforce record. And that something can be when users create a new record, edit an existing record, or delete a record. So for example, if someone changes an opportunity's stage to closed one, that can be the trigger for kicking off a flow that creates a task for the opportunity owner to follow up in six months. That's just one specific use case, but obviously you can configure these flows to run based on any triggering event your org needs. Also, keep in mind that record triggered flows can run in either before save or after save mode. That just means that once a user starts the triggering event, like changing the opportunity stage, the events in your flow can run right before the new data is saved to Salesforce or directly after. The choice is going to boil down to what your flow is doing, the elements it needs to access, and whether it's even possible to do it in before save mode, since that option is more limited. And finally, in record triggered flows, your global record variable, AKA the record that triggers your flow, can actually access both the new and old field values. So if your opportunity stage was originally prospecting before someone changed it to closed one, you could technically access both of those values. By the way, if you have no clue what the global record variable is, pause here, check out the linked video, and then come back. Okay, so now that we understand how record triggered flows fire, when do you actually use them? You're basically calling a record triggered flow anytime you need something to happen based on the actions taken on an individual record. So underscore individual here. And again, those triggers are either going to be a record creation, deletion, or update. So to really drive this point home, let's go back to our opportunity stage example. When someone changes an opportunity stage to closed one, a flow will trigger that creates a follow-up task on the opportunity record. But what happens if you or another admin change a bunch of opportunities to close one at the same time using data loader or some other mass update tool? Well, remember these flows fire based on individual record changes. So that flow would fire on each individual opportunity and create a task for each one. And finally, you'll only wanna use record triggered flows when the automation that you have is okay to run in the background. And if you've seen that phrase before, this is basically a fancy way of saying when your flow can be invisible to users and not require them to interact with any specific elements. And if you're wondering what type of flow you would use in that example, that would be a screen flow. Okay, so now that we've got the basics down, let's take a look in Salesforce. Okay, in this first example, we have a record triggered flow that fires when the opportunity stage is changed to closed one. Let's take a quick look at the setup step first. Here we've selected our triggering object, which is the opportunity. Then here is where we've set our trigger. Remember I said that we can trigger these flows to run when a record is created, updated, or deleted. The point of this flow is to create a task for the opportunity owner once a deal is closed and to update the close date. Those are scenarios that should only happen to existing opportunity records, so we'll choose when the record is updated to fire this flow. Now for the entry conditions. We only want this flow to run on opportunity records that are set to closed one. So that's where our stage criteria comes in. And now down here, this is really important. I only want the flow to run when a user actually sets the stage to closed one because I'm creating a task based on that specific event. So if an opportunity is already closed one, but the user changes something else, I need to make sure this flow won't fire. That's why I'll choose only when a record is updated to meet the condition requirements, which is the stage criteria up here. So hopefully that makes sense. And finally, here is where we choose between our before save and after save option. You wanna use before save, AKA fast field updates, when the automation is making changes to your triggering record only. 
we are updating the trigger record's close date in this scenario. So if that were the only thing that we were doing, we would want to do before save mode. But since we're actually creating a task record related to the opportunity, we'll need to do after save mode, aka actions and related records, in order to meet our business requirement. Now, just quickly browsing through our flow. This assignment element updates the opportunity's close date to be whatever date the flow runs. Hey gang, editing D here. Now that I'm looking at this, just note that this assignment element wouldn't actually update my opportunity records if it's not followed by an update records element. So in retrospect, if I were to rebuild this flow, I would just skip the assignment element altogether and use an update records element to update the trigger records close date directly. Sorry, back to the video. And then this create records element creates the task record for our opportunity owner to follow up. Note that we've set our task owner to be the owner of the opportunity down here. And we've related the new task record to our opportunity right down here. Now let's look at one more version of this flow that references both the current and prior record variables that I mentioned a bit earlier. So in this example, we have the same exact flow as before, except we've now added an email step at the end. So this element down here will email the opportunity owner's manager to let them know that the stage has been changed to closed one. If we click into the element, you can see that we're pulling the email address for the manager from the opportunity owner's user record. So obviously the only way this works is if you're accurately maintaining that manager field on all of your user records. The body of the email is a text template resource that I set up earlier. So if we close this and open that resource, you can see the body of the message that's being pulled into that send email element. Again, this piece that I'm highlighting is our global record variable, aka the record that triggers the flow to fire. Our first global record variable reference is grabbing the opportunity record's name. The next reference here, the one with the prior in front of it, is grabbing the prior stage value. So whatever the stage was before the triggering event, AKA whatever the stage was before someone changed it to be closed one. And then our final reference is the new stage value, which again should be closed one because that's how we've configured this flow to work. Now let's do a quick debug and test. Here we're testing with the Dickinson Mobile Generator's opportunity record. So if I scroll down, you can see that the stage here is set to qualification. So this should be our global record variables prior stage value. Let's change it to closed one and see if the flow works. Okay, so talking through it really quickly. Here is the opportunity ID for the Dickinson Mobile Generator's opportunity record. You can see in our start condition requirements that we've met the entry criteria by changing the stage name to closed one. Our assignment element is populating the close date with the current date. We've created the task record here. And going down to this email step, if we look at the email body that's generated in the debug log, we can see that the text template resource has properly pulled in the name of the opportunity record, the prior stage, which was qualification, and the current stage, which is closed one. 
And that's it gang. If this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.